So a while back, I made a video uh, showing how to install Ubuntu onto a Chromebook uh, to give uh, your, your device a bit more flexibility. And somebody left a comment on that video uh, asking me to do a video about um, how to install Wine. Now, Wine is a, is a program or an application that lets you run Windows applications on a Linux desktop, which you normally can't do. And I thought it was a really good idea and I put it kind of in the back of my head and then it got lost there um, until this morning when somebody commented on there that uh, you could just go to the Linux App Store or the Ubuntu App Store and install it from there. And they're not, I guess, technically wrong. You kind of can, um, but it's like a development version and I don't like to use development versions um, in cases like that. So what I want to do in this video is show you how to install uh, the most current stable version of Wine into an Ubuntu desktop. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch camera angles and we'll just jump right into it. Okay, so here we are on our uh, Ubuntu desktop. Uh, what we can do is come over here to the uh, Ubuntu software store and we can type in Wine. We'll give that a second to sort. And sometimes things show up in here uh, with like a, a development version of Wine, sometimes they don't. Overall, I'm just not a fan of using that kind of stuff. So what we're, what we're gonna do is close that, we'll open up Firefox, and we'll go to, let me pull up the website here. So this is a great step-by-step -step on how to do everything you'll need to do to get the most stable current version of Wine installed. Uh, the first thing that we'll have to do most likely is um, enable the um, i386 architecture here. So we're just gonna do a lot of copying and pasting to, to get things going. Uh, but first we need a terminal. So we'll open terminal and then we'll just paste that in there. We'll enter and we'll enter our super secure password there. And so that's the first step. Now we've got to add the repository so that our Ubuntu uh, desktop can communicate with the right servers to get the stuff we need. Um, so that's good. Oops. Copy that, we'll paste this in. That's good, so then we'll copy this, paste that, all right. So uh, that's pretty much all we've got to do there at first. Uh, the next thing we've got to do is actually update our system here um, so that we make sure we've got everything uh, enabled the way we need it to be. So we'll go ahead and hit update. Uh, this may take a little while depending on how many updates need to happen, uh, how fast your internet speed is, things like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let this run, probably take a few minutes, oh, or it could just make a complete liar out of me and do it right now. Um, so then our next step here is to decide which branch we want to install, whether it's stable development or staging. Um, development and staging I wouldn't advise unless you're a developer. And if you're a developer, you're not watching this video. So uh, we're going to use the stable branch. So again, whoops, we're going to, uh, we're going to go ahead and paste that in there and we'll hit enter. And then it's going to say, Hey, there's a bunch of stuff to install. Do you want to do that? Yep. I sure do. Again, this may take a few minutes, depending again on your internet connection speed and the resources you've allocated for your, uh, for your virtualized Ubuntu system. Okay, so just that quickly and easily, uh, we've got this installed. Uh, it used to be that you'd have to go in and go through a configuration process. Uh, luckily, they've streamlined a lot of that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is um, just for the sake of oops, uh, demonstration here. Whoa, uh -uh, that was the wrong thing. Uh, let's just do QTorrent and let's download it from Google. There we go. <clears throat> So we're going to go ahead and download uh, the, the link for Windows here, or the, the file for Windows, the executable there. We'll give that just a second to do its thing. It's thinking. Maybe, there it goes. And yep, we want to download that. And we actually just want to save this file. And we'll go ahead and open up our downloads folder here. Let's minimize some stuff. We got a dirty, dirty desktop there. All right. And so now we can just run this. 
Now, normally this wouldn't have run uh, because it's uh, an executable instead of, or it's, it's, it's a .exe file instead of a .deb file. Um, executables are for Windows. Um, so now we're gonna go through this process of, of installing everything. You only have to do part of this one time. It's the first time you try to use Wine. Uh, you will have to go through this process. We'll click install. Uh, it'll go through a bit of a process here. It's saying we don't have the Gecko package, so we're going to go ahead and install that. Download and install. Now it's updating some stuff. And click install. You may have to go through this a few times to get everything to install properly. Okay, so now all of that is done. Again, that part only happens once, um, and I'm super thankful for that. Um, but now it's actually asking us to install uh, the program that we downloaded initially. So, or the, this Windows executable file, rather. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Um, so now we're just gonna click Next like we normally would. We're gonna accept the license agreement like we normally would. Um, all of this is fine. We'll go ahead and create a desktop shortcut. Click Next. Yep, this is all fine. Um, you'll notice that it's got a C program files 86. Um, that's a, a a fake file or a fake string there. Um, it's just it's an emulated uh, directory. So apparently Wine is still still uh, having some thoughts here. All right, so go ahead and click install. And then it'll go through the normal uh, install process like you would expect to see on a Windows computer. Great, so now we can go ahead and click finish and we're gonna go ahead and launch that. There is our, uh, our desktop icon like we told it to. This is saying, hey, uh, this is file sharing, don't do anything stupid. Uh, yep, yeah, I agree. And there we go, now we've got a Windows executable running on a Linux desktop. So there you go. Um, it's, a, it's a bit more in depth than necessarily just going to the Windows or the, the Linux store and installing it that way. But it, sometimes it's good to be able to know how to do things in command line and get more familiar with how to use Linux, whether it's Ubuntu or Mint or, or whatever. Um, sometimes it's nice to just go click something, install it and be done. But it really is good to know how to get into that command line and do everything um, more efficiently and effectively with a bit more knowledge as far as what's going on behind the scenes. So hopefully this video was helpful and gave you some insight into how it can be done. And if it, if it was helpful, uh, it would be amazing if you guys could give me a thumbs up on the video. Uh, it would help me out a bunch. Uh, if you like these kind of tutorials, I've been releasing more of them lately. Uh, so if you want more information on that, hit the subscribe button. Maybe even consider hitting the bell uh, so you can be notified maybe uh, when these new videos come out. Also, I'll have a link to all my social medias down below where you can follow me. I always notify uh, my social media people when I release a new video there as well. So again, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.